Hey everyone, Kuro the Artist here, and welcome back to another Ben 10 Breakdown. We've got one episode left after this one before we tackle the legendary Season 2 finale, which wraps up the hybrid arc. But first, we're taking a leap into the Null Void. The trio has spent the past two seasons deep into the hybrid invasion schemes, doing everything they can to learn about it, save those in need, and prevent things from getting worse. Well, over in another dimension, there's an entirely different war going on for a long time, and the perpetrator, Devoid, is nearing total victory. Devoid's plans actually seem just as elaborate as the hybrids, with lots of planning, intricate countermeasures, and a huge army on his side. Conceptually, Devoid makes himself out to be a huge threat in only a single episode, both with his power and his brains to pull it off. Ben basically has to handle ending an entirely different war before he tackles the hybrid, and it's pretty impressive that he pulls it off. With both Ben as a character and us as an audience, we haven't been following the Null Void War as intricately from episode to episode, so it's hard to feel the same level of investment that we do with the hybrid. But hearing all of the backstory on the Void's reign in the Null Void and seeing how people have suffered, it'd be foolish to say this is just another typical throwaway threat. Oh, and this is also the episode where Dr. Animo became absolutely swole, and he remains this way for the next two series, which, as you may guess, has hardcore fans very divided. If this is your first breakdown and you're curious about how my rating system works, there's a detailed description down below, along with a link to all of my previous breakdowns, but by all means watch this video first, I'm sure you'll still enjoy it. But real quick, I want to once again bring attention to the 5YL 5th anniversary stream happening on April 4th, and to help promote this stream, I'll be streaming on Twitch a day after this video drops at 1pm EST, and I'm gonna try streaming on Twitch a little more frequently, so make sure that you follow our Twitch The Rust Bucket down below, along with joining us in the 5YL 5th anniversary celebration with me, the whole Ink Tank, and our fun, talented guests Nicholas Andrew Louie and Paxton Lee, the voices of Ben and Danny for the 5YL Motion comic. We're also checking out the poll on which mid-season 2 episode was your favorite, and Grounded won by a long shot. But I totally agree, Grounded is definitely the best episode out of this whole bunch, and it's nice to see it get the recognition it deserves. Jim Krieg wraps up the grieving grandpa arc that he originally started in Max Out, with this episode voided, first airing December 5th, 2008. Gwen receives a distress call from Helen in the Null Void, and Ben goes in alone to check things out. He runs into Dr. Animo, now going by Devoid, who has enslaved a significant amount of the Null Void, and plans to mine a special order that not only gives him his powers, but would allow him to drill back into his universe so he can become the true dictator of it and bring his whole army with him. Very trivial observation, but it's super rare that we open an episode not on an establishing shot. We're right here at a kind of close-up shot of Gwen, but we've been to Ben's room enough times that you probably can understand the layout and all of that. Once again, Gwen touching someone else's laundry when she absolutely does not have to. That's like shoving your hand in a toilet and being like, ew, gross. Well, just... Don't do it. Tell me about this message. Let's just wait for Kevin. I don't have to tell it twice. That's practically my catchphrase during ink tank meetings. A telepathic SOS sent through my energy field. Can she receive those involuntarily? Ben's hair below the shine is colored much darker than it should be. I feel like this is an error that shows up in classic sometimes. Ah, something coming in. Yeah, I guess it just happens. Imagine being Gwen and you're just sleeping and randomly at 2 a.m. Boom, giant head projection in your room. Doesn't sound fun. <laughs> Can you hear me, Gwen? Even though Gwen's receiving it mystically, it's coming in as if on Helen's end they're using a form of technology to do so. Which makes sense because Helen and probably anybody else around here doesn't actually know how to do magic. Holograms? Loving the faint pink glow on them. Not exactly a color palette switch, but you know, gives it some more atmosphere. It's important. Terrible danger. Help desperately. I guess she's all shook up about this and whatnot, but she could be a little more specific. What did they expect going into the null void? A nice subtle way of getting the exposition in there for those that might not have seen their debut episode. Episode. You're not going in there. I can handle it. No, you can't. There's too much riding on us being here. So Ben's objection is because other people need to stay on Earth in case of any DNA alien activity. It's not because he doesn't believe Gwen can handle it. Because Ben and even Kevin too has seen firsthand that Gwen's fine in the Null Void. And now she's like so much more powerful than the first time. But this hair coloring error is pretty consistent. Kevin's garage shows up a lot more than I remember too. Last time I went into the Null Void, I didn't need all this junk. That's because last time you were sent to the Null Void accidentally. When Gwen went on purpose, she did not Indeed, have a whole lot of gear to help her. You had a motorhome full of cool state of the art plumber gear, which you sold. Little callback to Kevin's big score. This is a high continuity episode already. Two Alien Force episodes and two classic series episodes are already immediately relevant. I like that we're this deep in the lore now that they just don't care anymore and they're like, yeah, 
if you missed out, then, you know, we're halfway through season two, so good luck. The Plumber Snake is an unbreakable pan-dimensional retrieval system, which you are very lucky I have. I would say it's pretty random that Kevin would have something like this, but you gotta think he was trapped in the null void as a child for years. He's probably super prepared in case he ever gets sent back there again. <laughs> Oh, that's a neat effect. So Gwen's able to rip a hole into the null void just based off of her own power, tracing back the energies that Helen sent through to contact Gwen. I forgot that they didn't have a null void projector in this episode, and it really was just Gwen sending him there. That's a pretty impressive feat when you think about it. They're really good with the shadows in this episode, too, so far. It's only been a couple minutes, but I mean, hey, still minutes worth of effort. How do you think he turns on this backpack, though? Just mentally? So now we're back into the Null Void, which we've actually only seen once so far. It feels like we've seen it a lot more than we actually have due to its iconic nature. But this is a very different look for it. A lot more concrete rock formations in a red background, as opposed to the rippling purple background and very obscure rock formations from the classic. I've come accustomed to both looks by now, but which one do y'all like more so far? The classic Null Void or the Alien Force Null Void? Let me know in the comments below. Pocket Dimension. I like that the rocks are still subtly moving though, so the background isn't completely static. <laughs> And a Null Guardian, one of the infamous Null Void creatures from Classic. Pretty much looks exactly the same as Classic. I wouldn't be surprised if they use the exact same model sheet. I'm coming! This guy right here has the same, like, black mask pattern that Tiny did in the last episode. Although his looks even more like a mask. Well, the screen shakes and distorts its focus when it roars. Adds a lot of energy to it. Wait, is shooting a mouth laser? Couldn't do that last time. Could it? Yeah, this is definitely a new power for them. I wouldn't really mind it if it didn't seem like everything in Ben 10 can shoot lasers. And on top of that, it always looks like the same laser. Some great dodging skills though, even with the jetpack. Now this is some great animation of him flying through the crevices of the two boulders. Or one boulder split, I guess. But then when he comes out, the edges are very smooth. <laughs> He set this up very fast. The wrench would never let me fall into the hands of Devoid. Is this guy Dwight Schultz? No, actually, I think this is Paul Eiding. Although now, at least according to the wiki, I can see that Dwight Schultz voices the Null Guardians. Guess D needed a break. This entire dimension is becoming destabilized. Gwen following someone's energy to track them down transdimensionally. Ben having to fight off somebody who's causing an entire dimension to crumble. Did I accidentally rip off some story beats from 5YL from this episode? Whoops. Speaking of 5YL, 5 Five year anniversary stream coming this April 4th. Please follow us on Twitter for more updates. Who is the wrench anyway? You're not a helper? But even so! Alright, this guy doesn't need to shout everything he says. He's like, yeah, I know we have to hide, but I'm gonna be as loud as possible when we're doing it. The only person who dares defy the void, they found us! I wonder how. Love me a good Omnitrix shot every now and then. <laughs> What the hell is this thing? Its face is kind of shaped like that giant thing that chased Vilgax and Kevin in Classic. It's like the body of the map maker. I like that even though they haven't brought attention to it. If you look closely, you can see that Manny's hand is missing. I like that Helen's shadows are being affected by the fire, even though it's off screen. So that's some true attention to detail. It's devoid. The Null King is upon us! You know, Null King sounds cool as a playoff of Null Void. But on its own, the word Null means that it's not actually, like, bound by law or something. Or, like, it's no longer valid. I'll throw the definition on screen when I'm editing this, but technically he's saying the invalid king. As if the Void has no right to be the king he proclaims he to be. Which is true. So it's, like, a double meaning. You need to go too. You're too valuable to fall into Hands. But you called him here. The only reason he's here is because of you, and now you're telling him not to get involved? Maybe she wants to brief him on the mission first, but I wouldn't be turning away Ben's assistance this quickly. At least let him fight some Null Guardians with you. Nobody can beat Devoid. I really love how much they're hyping up Devoid. He's one of the hypes that do seem to pay off, at least in my opinion, but we'll get there. Find the wrench. To be fair, he made it pretty far without losing cable. Man, he's just soaring due to the anti-gravity nature of the Null Void. I wish they played around with the weird gravity that the Null Void has a little bit more whenever they show up here. But hey, look at that. His hand is fine right here. Guess it's not as consistent as I thought. Who dares defy Devoid? Hell yeah. Now it's time for another big divider in the fandom. Dr. Animal? Now, I'm not gonna lie. I actually think Devoid is pretty dope. You can say it goes against Dr. Animo as a character and all of those arguments, and they are all completely valid. If you like Dr. Animo for his core character, this is not it. At least not as a regular thing. I think him coming into the Null Void and creating this Devoid persona is something pretty valid that Dr. Animo would do, and it's cool to see him be like the top dog for a change. 
and be like the powerful intimidating bad guy but it's when they decide to keep this for him until the end of ultimate alien that's what kind of soils it i feel like that's why fans don't like this but right here in this episode i i do believe it very much works what have we here his voice is super cool too it still sounds like dr animo too especially because you know it's dwight schultz not like they replace the actor but it's very satisfying to hear dr animo successfully put on an intimidating villain voice <laughs> See, like this, this crazy leap. They should embrace the playfulness of the null void terrain. His bottom half even slightly resembles his original outfit. So he literally evolved into this form out of his original self. Now he's super swole. No hope at all. They should have given Ben like a gun or something. I'm sure Kevin has loads of weapons he could have lended Ben. But here Gwen and Kevin are, yet again at the other side of a portal waiting for Ben to come. And no matter how much time passes on Ben's POV, it always seems like nothing's passed for Gwen and Kevin. Like they really just been standing here for hours, didn't even want to get a chair. What happened? It does seem like the portal is running automatically now. I'm sure Gwen is supposed to be focusing to constantly keep it open, but right now it doesn't even seem like she's paying attention. <laughs> The way that shot set up, I almost seemed like Manny did that electricity. Because there's no one here, no Ben or Brainstorm. The Null Guardians swarm in. Electric shot. Then they open up, and Manny's not even here. But we do see Brainstorm. Who dares? Okay, now Brainstorm is holding Manny. Oh, you know what? You can ever so slightly see Manny is right here on Brainstorm. He's just colored the same as Brainstorm because it's so far away. It barely even matters. Dr. Animo. Yeah. Brainstorm already seems much smaller than he did in this scene right here. I feel like Brainstorm and Echo Echo are the hardest aliens in Grey Matter too to really make sure their size is consistent. I mean, look at this shot of Brainstorm from season three. Jeepers. He's also got a much more muted and burnt orange color palette in this episode. Sometimes he's very red and shiny, and other times he's like this. You know my name. <laughs> Brainstorm's lightning is blue in this episode as opposed to its usual yellow. I don't really mind though. Let's go! Yeah, look how tiny he is now. Helen snatches him and grabs Manny. She is very strong. But yeah, this is definitely the tiniest we've ever seen Brainstorm so far. But not for long. Well, he's still talking to himself, so he's definitely Dr. Animo. Not my son. I've given you everything you've asked for. Please! Aw, oh, poor guy. <laughs> no. What happened here? The boy is too strong to fight. I really like how they played out that scene. It says a lot without saying anything. Like, they don't have to break this down for you and explain how he lost his arm. Just the fact that it happened alone and Manny seems very unwilling to talk about it sets the tone for how serious this is. I'm so sorry about your son. I thought the Null Void was a prison. The Galvin created this pocket dimension so they could banish their criminals from the universe itself. And that's exactly in line with the classic series. I like how even though they're changing up how the Null Void works in Alien Force, there's a canon segue between the two. And it's not just like, oh, now the Null Void's different because it's a different show. A lot of these designs are reused from the classic series. This guy is the same species as the dude who talked to the Tick. Pretty sure this guy was shown in the future at one point, like during Ben 10,000 or Ken 10. I remember seeing this guy posted by Tom Perkins, although I can't remember what episode he's from. This is one of the rats from Secret of the Omnitrix. This looks a little bit like a Lenopin almost. This is another Tick worshiper, the one with a hammer. This looks like a sludge puppy too, except colored differently. This guy, uh, it's probably just a random design. This guy is the same as the one we just saw right over here, and I don't recognize this one. Other worlds discovered the Null Void and started dumping their criminals here as well. Other worlds as in other dimensions, or just not the Galvin? Because if it means other dimensions, that really does play into the Generator Rex crossover, where the Null Void is like a gateway between dimensions. The Galvin created the Null Guardians. Oh shit, I forgot they mentioned in the actual canon that the Galvin created of the Null Guardians. I thought that was like exclusively pop-up trivia info, but glad to hear it acknowledged in the show. Void somehow gained control of the Null Guardians. Everyone to dig for Cormite. You know, this whole thing is like a mini version of the hybrid arc. Both the Void and the hybrid come to a new terrain, take over some of the locals, force people to mine a yellow crystal for their plans. I mean, when you find a system that works, it does feel pretty different though. I'm not trying to rag on it, but I can't help but make that comparison. At least they don't feel like the same story. On my world, he calls himself Dr. Animo and he has the power to control animals. Well, not really the power, more of the technology. Actually, no, he did gain, like, the literal power, too, in Secret of the Omnitrix, right? Or the negative 10, I don't know, I, I remember something along the lines of that, but... 
I guess it doesn't really matter. He's fought Devoid before. Maybe he can help us. It's also pretty interesting that Grandpa Max didn't tell them the truth about Devoid, because he was there pretty much every time Ben fought Animo. This is where he lives. What have you done? Pierce is alive. It makes sense that Pierce would be alive since, like, when he died, he was thrown into what they thought was a disintegrator, but was actually a null void portal. So it's cool that they met up with him, and now he's part of the crew. Maybe this guy is just a shapeshifter showing you what you want to see. Smart of Pierce to question that. We as the audience think he's just being paranoid because we know Ben's Ben, but who knows what he's been through in the Null Void. In fact, he's been here longer than anybody else, and he was alone. There's only one way to get to the wrench. Through me. You're a real sport, Pierce. Man, something about this whole scene is just so enjoyable. Ben chooses to fight on his own and not transform in order to seem more trustworthy. But not only that, he's actually pretty skilled. Even with a bow staff, all those training sessions with Gwen is really paying off. <laughs> This fight right here shows all the skills Ben has. He's dodged every single thing Pierce threw at him and hasn't struck at all yet. And the first time he actually attempts to hit him, it lands and knocks Pierce completely off balance. This fight is 100% in Ben's control right now. Pretty precise block too. He managed to wedge his arm in between his spikes so he won't get stabbed. Although here he gets whacked pretty hard. Ooh, out of his back. Ben's still playing him. He's got one stick left and he chooses to hide it, but drops it. You didn't do too bad. One of the void spies would have mopped the floor with me in a fair fight. Ben's trying so hard to bite his tongue right now. But he wouldn't have lasted long after. Go Manny. All of Manny's scenes are very subtle in this episode, but I'm really digging his character. Really reflects the world they've been living in the past couple of weeks. I'll take you to the wrench. This is a nice little hut. Don't eat anything he offers you. Yeah, you can definitely tell it's Grandpa Max by that line. Although we're literally about to find out out, like not 30 seconds later so it's not that much foreshadowing uh mr wrench here it is <gasps> quite the reveal i've seen this episode so many times and it's i'm already starting to get excited again when i detonated that null void grenade it blasted me here reference to max out which was uh the seventh episode of season one or the sixth depending on like which order we're going in yeah it was number seven in production order and this one was actually the eighth episode instead of the tenth i feel like this works much better as the tenth it's only a two episode difference but it did feel like grandpa max was revealed to be alive a little bit too soon in the original airing order or at least throw a monkey wrench into the machinery hence the wrench the wrench is a pretty badass name too how on earth did pierce beat you oh uh, max has got so much support for ben's skills knowing that even without the omnitrix ben could beat pierce is a pretty neat little fact i kind of let him win <laughs> what <laughs> he's so offended by that pierce gather your team so this is allegedly made up of a lot of the same creatures that helen and manny originally sent to the null void and came back here to rescue but none of them are the ones that appeared on their little monitor when we first saw their victim list. But we got an albino Volpomancer, we got a Wigzillion Orc Beast, a really tall Havoc Beast. I thought these things are supposed to be like a foot tall or something. What you don't know is why. The Void learns the core might miss Frennis, which feeds his dimensional board. Wait, Pierce knows why, but Manny doesn't? They're really not sharing any information with each other and they're all on the same team. The Void wants to escape and bring his army of Null Guardians with him. He needs a whole machine to pull off what Gwen can casually do when she's not even at full power. We have to mount an all out attack on his citadel. Oh, you know what's funny? You can see some numbers right here that are probably uh, timing or frame information for the animators when they're putting this episode together. But it was left there for so long that it even got affected by all the filters they put on this hologram. So they're holographically projecting an error right now. We can hitch a ride. It's gotta be one heavy cart. Do you think Dr. Animo built this whole machine himself too, or is he repurposing something that was already here? It's like a whole building with structure, some pretty solid architecture right here. No! <laughs> Weird seeing Helen run at normal pace, or any kind of Celeron for that matter. But I love how the Vulpamancer has little paw prints on the bottom of his feet. Uh, and the green lasers. So obviously Chromastone's lasers are supposed to be, you know, rainbow and multicolored. And this is strictly my headcanon, but I like to think that his beams are green by default, because if you notice, he didn't absorb anything yet. So perhaps this is what his lasers naturally look like. And when he absorbs some type of energy or light or whatever, that's when he shoots out the chromatic beams. Helen just took on four Null Guardians. Yeah, see like this whole structure, this nice little doorway with the flames and all of that. This, this definitely seems like something that was here before that he just took over. So before Ben transforms back, his Omnitrix blinks a little bit. And you hear some sound effects correspond with the blinking too. 
I don't know what that was supposed to mean. Look at that size difference between Chromastone and Ben. Always a pleasure to try and end your miserable interfering life. Now he sounds a little bit more Dr. Animo-ish. Sure. Yeah, all the colors seem a little bit warmer and more muted in this episode. For everybody too, not just Ben's aliens. Brainstorm again. Maybe they're trying to make up for how little he appears in this episode. Well, Brainstorm's quite literally got a smooth brain moment. Yeah, but see, now look at the size difference between Ben and Brainstorm here. He's all over the place in this episode. Try Swampfire's methane attack! So some people like to point out that Grandpa Max hasn't seen Swampfire before, so he shouldn't know about Ben's aliens, but, I mean, Grandpa Max has already said he was keeping tabs on the team back in Season 1. I'm so proud of you. All of you. I've been watching. You've come a long way. So it's safe to assume that he knows all of Ben's aliens. But what I'm confused on why he think the methane attack would be a good idea. That doesn't seem like it's gonna do shit to Dr. Animo. Maybe, like, the methane would get in his lungs and suffocate him or something. But here! So I wonder if Ben can actually see Dr. Animo drawing power, or this is like for us as the audience to understand what Ben's looking at here when he puts it together. A world to conquer. Dr. Animo is tall now. This furnace empowers him! Friggin' sweet, he just dives right in. But right now his Omnitrix has been working perfectly the past two seasons, so he has no reason to believe, like, he has anything to worry about. Whereas if this was, like, classic or season three, Ben, I would be like, no, transform, then jump. On this frame right here, the side thing is on the wrong layer. <laughs> Pretty nice steam coming out of his mouth as he falls. One Necrophrygian can do this. Now that is a power flex. The Null Guardians are free. Oh shit. Even without any of his additional power, Dr. Animo should be able to cream Max right here, but boom. Two hooks to the face and he's out. Never mess with the original Tennyson strength. Make sure everyone is out of those mines. We've still got a lot of work. I like that it's not even all over after this. There's now a bunch of cleanup that he has to do as a result of Devoid messing with the Null Void in the first place. But look at this, right in the nick of time. Ben! Hi, Pumpkin. Grandpa! Time to go. I can't go, Ben. The Earth needs you to protect it, Ben. I need you. I'm always with you. Oh man. Paul Eiding's portrayal really sells the Grandpa Max character. Just hearing his voice, he could be saying anything and it'll give you the warm fuzzies. Time to come home, Ben. If I can describe this episode in one word, it would be epic. This episode gave me a lot of vibes that Ken 10 did, not so much in the specific context, but it's like when I said during that episode's breakdown, it felt like they built an entire world just for this one episode. You can tell there's a lot that happened beforehand and a lot that's gonna need to happen after, and it's like we temporarily stepped into a season that doesn't even exist, but has enough there for it to be its own story arc. And with that, I'm going to give the plot a four. I think this episode pulled off a lot of its ambitions in the most exciting ways. The return of Dr. Animo was certainly a treat, and it was nice to see him try to play against his own type, but still be the same character. He's been a joke character ever since Classic, and pretty much remains a joke character all the way throughout the franchise, even into the reboot. So I think he deserves, like, one episode to truly feel like a threat. And while this episode does cause a little discourse for Dr. Animo's character, and it takes a bit to get him back on course to his true core from when we get to Omniverse, Devoid is still a great antagonist in this episode. And the plot of this also has a lot of like season finale vibes in of itself. It ties together a lot of things that were set up throughout the previous two seasons, such as the plumber's helpers, the disappearance of Max, expanding on the idea of the Null Void in general. Now it's not just a random cesspool of villains, like the offspring of the previous prisoners are starting to create their own colony inside the Null Void. The drama was always played straight. This is probably one of the most serious episodes of the first two seasons, and I think a plot like this well deserves to take itself seriously. You say the phrase Dr. Animo tries to take over the Null Void to like a classic series fan and you'll probably get a very different idea of how this episode actually played out. And while I would like a little more explanations for the smaller things, it could very well do without them. Characterization is going to get a 5. There's a lot of great moments for all of the characters in here, big and small. While Pierce didn't get much screen time, there's enough there to make him a very enjoyable character and it makes you look forward to the future times he appears in the series. And like I said, with Dr. Animo, in this 
this episode, it does seem like his character can eventually land on this path. And there are still hints of Dr. Animo's kookiness sprinkled throughout his personality in here. But all of the scenes between Ben and Max, it almost had a classic series feel to it. Now, despite how far Ben goes along his journey and the type of person he evolves into, when he's around Max, the part of him that still urges for his guidance and wisdom is pulled forward because Ben always feels more confident when he has Grandpa Max supporting all of his decisions. And I guess at this point, it's more about Ben accepting that he is okay on his own and that he doesn't need Grandpa Max. But that doesn't mean he doesn't love and care about Max anymore. He could just function without him. Visuals, it's going to get a 5. A lot of interesting aliens in here. No Void, while it's a little simpler than the classic series, it's still an interesting landscape. And there's just a ton of excitement all throughout this episode. The return of Helen and Manny. Ben versus Pierce. Grandpa Max's reveal. The assault on the Void's tower. Even the smaller beats in between the major action pieces are captivating in their own way. Yeah, some of the colors and powers are a little off, but it doesn't ruin the episode. And a lot of the visuals really help the emotional beats as well. Importance, it gets a 5 for obvious reasons. And entertaining, we'll throw it another 5 as well. After all of those mid-season episodes kind of bringing down the hype of Alien Force Season 2, this episode was absolutely a saving grace. And if for some reason this actually was like the Season 2 finale, and they saved the hybrid resolution for like the beginning or even the end of Season 3, I would have been cool with it. There's enough here to make it feel like they wrapped up a lot of themes and plots that were set up in Season 2, but knowing that we still have the true Season 2 finale to get to makes this episode a real treat to enjoy. That leaves this episode off at a 24 out of 25. It feels like it's still missing that final piece to make this a perfect 25 out of 25, but I would challenge you to find someone who genuinely does not like this episode, even if they don't like the change they made to Dr. Animo's character. As an episode, it's still extremely enjoyable, and there are things to appreciate with the void as well. This episode was pretty straightforward, so I don't have a lot of final thoughts, so let's just review what this poll will be. Keeping it pretty simple, which version of Dr. Animo was your favorite? The classic one, this here Devoid, his buff form in Ultimate Alien, Omniverse Dr. Animo, or the future Dr. Animo with the gorilla body? Let me know what you think in the community tab when this video goes live. I hope you all have a great start to your week, and as always, keep it fizzy.